Scientists have shown that for several decades now, humanity has been consuming more resources than our planet can produce each year. World Overshoot Day marks the point in the current year when renewable resources have been exhausted. In 2022, World Overshoot Day was on the 28th of July. Mankind is living in debt, and more and more of this debt is being taken from our planet. This cannot be considered sustainable because at current rates of consumption, resources will inevitably run out before long. The over-exploitation of resources has been known for quite some time. As early as the 1987, the United Nations published the so-called Brundtland Report. The report defined sustainable development as development that meets the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. The current over-exploitation of resources is clearly damaging the ability of future generations to meet their needs, and therefore the current state of our world does not meet the definition of sustainable development. Resource use is an important element of sustainability, but there are other dimensions as well. More specifically, sustainability is usually divided in three dimensions – ecological, social and economic. Of these, the ecological dimension relates in particular to the use of renewable and non-renewable resources mentioned above. It is noteworthy that the ecological dimension is also currently dominating the debate on sustainability in the media and even in academia. The social dimension of sustainability relates to the well-being and opportunities for fulfillment of people and different groups of people. It cannot be considered sustainable that some people have to work in slavery-like conditions in order to support themselves and their families. Today, people's access to quality care for various illnesses is strongly linked to their level of income and country of origin. The prevailing view is that this is unacceptable in the long term, that is unsustainable, and the humanity must strive towards a situation where, for example, quality education and healthcare are within the reach of all citizens of the world. The economic dimension of sustainability means that our economic system does not lead, for example, to a situation where an inordinate amount of wealth ends up in the hands of individual countries or even individuals, while at the same time there are people who do not have enough wealth to meet even the basic needs of life, such as food. The debt and large-scale borrowing that characterize the current economic system must not, if the system is sustainable, drive people into slavery-like conditions either. In recent years, an increasing number of researchers have questioned the prevailing idea of continued exponential economic growth, arguing that it is unsustainable. Taken together, sustainability therefore consists of three dimensions – ecological, social and economic. And sustainable development is the process of moving towards a state where these three dimensions are in a balance that can be maintained over a long period of time. And how do these three dimensions of sustainability relate to projects? And how can the sustainability of projects be assessed? Let's take the example of a project to open a new copper mine in Africa. From an ecological point of view, copper is needed in the so-called green transition, in solutions such as solar and wind power cabling and electric car engines. The copper from the mine can also be recycled several times, for example when the windmill for which it is first used is later replaced by a new mill. On the other hand, the extractive industry is relatively energy intensive and the use of toxic chemicals in ore refining is still quite common. It can be said that our mining project has many beneficial and many harmful ecological effects at the same time. From a social point of view, the construction and operation of a copper mine is likely to provide employment for many people living near the mine. It depends to a large extent on the working conditions in the mine, to what extent these job opportunities 
will improve the living conditions of those living nearby from a social point of view. There are both mines in the world where working is very dangerous to health, as well as mines where safety and well-being at work are given very high priority. On average, mines in Africa are not very close to the top of the league in this respect. From an economic point of view, we can consider how the economic benefits of mining are distributed in our society. Does the wealth of those who build and operate the mine increase, and by how much? Will the mine radiate further positive effects to nearby villages or towns, for example, by enabling new profitable business activities in the field of logistics? Or will the clear majority of the proceeds follow into the pockets of foreign capital investors? And will local tourism businesses go bankrupt when the landscape is damaged and they can no longer find customers? To sum up, the sustainability impacts of a mining project or any major project are multidimensional and always include both positive and negative impacts. It is also important to note that these impacts are interdependent in many ways. For example, it may be possible to expand the output of a mine and hence the positive economic impacts by reserving a larger area for the mine and increasing its energy use. At the same time, reserving a larger area will force more local people to move from their homes, which must be seen as a negative social impact. Increased energy use is also a clear negative ecological impact. It can be concluded that assessing the sustainability of projects is a complex and partly subjective exercise. Ecological, social and economic impacts are all numerous and it is very difficult to compare them against each other. In a global economy the matter is also complicated by the fact that the greatest benefits may be realized in a different part of the world from where the greatest harms occur. This is also very true in our mining project example. Although sustainability assessment is very difficult, it is also extremely important, particularly because projects consume a great deal of our collective resources and at the same time they function as a key tool for reforming our societies. Individual decision makers, such as project managers, researchers and experts, as well as policy makers who influence laws and regulations, have a particularly important role to play in this matter.